Okay, so it's the middle of winter, and as a naturalist, you can imagine how difficult this is for me. I want to go out there and discover everything that's alive, but the bugs are all in like larval stages, hidden deep underground. The plants are all dead, you know, not going to show anything that has any sign that I could use to identify them. The birds have kind of done everything and they're uninteresting at the moment. There's just not a lot to discover, but that was until I found out about springtails, okay? And I mean it when I say it, springtails are the closest thing within being a naturalist to real life Pokemon. They have biomes and specific environments that they live in and you can find them in and they're specialized to. There's an absolute ton of them, but yet still a countable and identifiable amount of them. Uh, you can catch them, look at them under the microscope, identify them. They're extremely cute, at least some of them in my opinion, though I've had people disagree with me. And they're absolutely everywhere. And the greatest thing about them is that even though it is the dead of winter, they are still out and everywhere, out and about. And this whole thing started because I found one on the side of my house. Not just one, actually. I found like 10 on the side of my house. And they just keep showing up. They're just everywhere. They're so abundant, these little globular springtails, that I keep finding them on the side of the house. And it made me think about, well, how is the diversity? If these are showing up in the middle of winter, what might be showing up if I actually went and looked for them? Could I find multiple species? Could I find some diversity? And they're so easy to find and to catch. And there are so many species and such cool diversity. To every place that you look, you're gonna find something unique and different. According to Wikipedia, one temperate forest can hold 30 different species of springtail. One healthy forest. I don't think anything is even close to that other than plants. And honestly, in the winter, I don't think plants is even that. I don't think you could find 30 identifiable plants in a forest near me right now. But you can find 30 different species of springtail, which is freaking awesome. It turns out the ones that I found on my house are a type of globular springtail, which are these springtails that have these big butts and these tiny heads with what looks like pincers. They look like trap inch from Pokemon, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Uh, but springtails do not follow all the same body plan. In fact, springtails split off from insects, even though they are six-legged creatures, they split off from insects a very long time ago, to the point where despite being six-legged bugs, they are not actually insects. They're in their whole own group. That's how diverse and different they are. And so in addition to the globular springtails, there's also some elongate springtails and even other types of springtails. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are basically microscopic. Some can actually get quite decently big, especially in tropical areas. So today I wanna to show you how easy it is to find them, how cool they are and how fun finding them and identifying them is, and see how many species we can come across in just one or two sessions in a forest, searching through detritus, collecting them, and then bringing them home for the microscope. All right, welcome to springtail exploring time. I have just found a random trail just to demonstrate how easy this is. I've never been here. I don't know if the environment is right, but it doesn't matter because springtails are freaking everywhere. So all I'm gonna do is look for a moist spot on the trail where there's something that I can flip. A log, a board, a rock, anything that would be even a little bit embedded into the dirt that I can flip over and look at. All right, I found this. This is just part of a branch. It's laying on the ground. I wouldn't say the ground is like super moist here, but you know, with a recent rain, it could be mildly wet. And uh, I guarantee I will flip this and find springtails. So I'm just gonna roll it nicely because remember springtails can jump and will jump. I just saw a centipede. Uh, they can and will jump. So you gotta do it slow enough and carefully enough that they're not gonna immediately go for the escape. And now I have to scan. There's a cool millipede in the crevice there. Just got to scan because they are quite small. Let's see if I can find one. All right, so there is a globular springtail. I've turned the camera upside down, whatever. I'll flip it and post. There is a globular springtail. Now I can't even find them on the camera. Oh no, not over there, over here. Wait for it, oh, right there, okay. See them moving right there? For reference, there's my finger. That's about how big the guy is. Uh, I will take a video with my camera and put it alongside this. This is a globular springtail, probably the Dictyrum, Dictyr, 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 D
Munuta, the one that's absolutely everywhere. I've yet to find a different globular. Look at that, he goes into the shade and he disappears, and now he's out of the shade. But yeah, you see him moving around, and you should now be seeing the video of him, which is much better, because my camera on my camera, that thing, where'd it go? That, that, that thing is much better than my camera on my phone. Okay, I've actually found like five different springtails now, but specifically in, where did it go? This crevice, that crevice? Man, I get lost so easily when looking through a camera lens. Oh, in this crevice, there is a small red springtail. And red ones, I have never seen one before. They're super cool. He's in this crevice right here. Um, gonna be very hard to get out slash find because of lighting. I might have to put the flash on the camera and even then, I don't know, but I'm just gonna sit here and hopefully he wanders out because I've never seen one that color and that's really cool. Well, under that one log, I found three different springtails and I found the cool red one. Check out that footage that is now playing in the top left because I added it in post because I got great footage. This is all, by the way, with my Olympus TG6, which is like my camera that I typically use for underwater and for fish, but for some reason is really, really good at taking pictures of bugs. So if you have a camera like that, great. Otherwise you can get like a cheap microscope off of Amazon if you really wanna get detailed pictures of these bugs. Uh, really anything with a macro lens should be able to do most of them. There are some obscenely tiny ones. There was one on that log I didn't get a photo of cause I could just barely see it with the naked eye and couldn't get my camera to focus on it. But for the most part, you should be able to get decent pictures of springtails with a pretty cheap setup. If nothing else, you can literally get like a cheap $40 microscope on Amazon and just collect them and then bring them home and put them under the microscope you'll get some pretty good photos. Ah, okay, here's my favorite to look at. Down logs and all are cool, but my favorite is bark. Bark that's laying on the ground because it creates a nice flat surface that makes the springtails on it easy to find. And that's the best thing for springtails because they're really trying to discern amongst all the stuff on this log. And they will move. That's what I like to do is flip and give them some time to move around that'll help you look for them but in general it can be quite difficult because as you can see they're quite small so things like bark that are mostly flat help a lot oh there's one all right i just had to wait a little bit you might see him moving right there he's small and he's moving fast i might want a picture of this guy because he looks might be different than the other globular springtails i've seen thus far what a great flip. That was my first ever non Dicertoma minuta globular springtail. So of those groups of like big budded springtails, that's what I've been calling them, the fat ass springtails, I've only ever found the one species. And that was the first time I found a different species. And I actually had a discussion in the iNaturalist Discord, because there's a springtail channel there, about why I was only founding the one species. And one of the theories was that that's one of the largest species around, and so I wasn't really looking for the smaller ones, because I would see the big ones and get hyper-focused on them. And I think they might have been right, because that thing was pretty tiny, and I only noticed it because I was looking at a bigger one, and it was a different species. I don't know what species yet, but it didn't have any of the back coloration that D. Minuta has. So cool. I found like five new species to me today. That's how easy springtails are. I'm literally playing Pokemon right now. I'm just in a forest in the dead of winter, flipping logs and finding species. And it's not just springtails. I mean, there's cool isopods, there's millipedes, there's centipedes, there's mites. There's all sorts of awesome things going on. And one of the most magical things about springtails is that just like Pokemon, they live in all the different biomes. So here I am in some backwaters to the side of a stream and sitting on top of the water. Just sitting there, chilling on the water surface because they can walk on water because they make so little surface tension is a springtail. Even under just normal forest leaf litter, just a bunch of leaves piled on the forest. If you get any particularly damp spot, which really can be anywhere after it rained, and you dig through, boom, I just saw a springtail jump. Boom, I just saw another springtail jump. There's that many. They're all under the leaves. Oh, there's one moving through. Ooh, that's one I've never seen before moving through the forest floor. Let me try to get a picture or a video. 
All right, I just laid down and dug through leaf litter for a bit, and I got two vials of cool looking springtails. We are gonna take those home and look at them under the microscope. I'll still probably spend a little while on this trail looking for more because I'll be honest, finding springtail species is addicting, but I will see you at home and we are going to look through the microscope at what some of them look like at a smaller level. All right, hello and welcome to the science table. This is just a little extra desk I have in my room where I do basically science type stuff. Uh, I have four vials. One of them has a weevil in it that I found, one of them has a different beetle in it that I found, and then two of them have springtails in it. And I use this microscope thing, it's a coin microscope that I got off Amazon, it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, which is why I like it. I'm not very good with this stuff. It has these built-in lights that you can bend and position, which is really nice. As I knock a vial off my desk. Not a vial containing anything, luckily. And then I typically will place things on top of the top half of a Petri dish so that the background is out of focus because otherwise the background looks bad. And it will display on the screen what it's seeing. I can focus it and such. So let's look at some stuff. So this weevil who was basically acting completely dead when I caught him is now very active and finding his way around. But there's a cute weevil. You can see how the camera works. The date and time are wrong, but basically it's just light and he's on the thing and that thing looks at it and displays it here. And then I can press okay to take a photo when I have a good position. Alrighty, here's a springtail. Oh, he decided to come right across the camera. These guys will move around a lot unless you put them in the freezer first, which is what I tend to do because it will sort of knock them out and then you can always let them go and they'll be okay but he's gonna be very active, but that is what one of the springtails looks like under the microscope. All right, now this guy, this other springtail, you'll see he's even entirely different, and then you've got the globulars, which look entirely different than that. He's a little bit knocked out, he's moving a bit. Oh, he's moving a lot, okay. Well, he was knocked out for a second, I swear. And with that, I have concluded my escapade into the world of springtails. I've got all my photos on a little TF card here that I will upload to the computer and the videos that you will see during this video. I hope you enjoyed. Looking for springtails is really cool and in the winter when there's really not much else to do, I think it's a pretty awesome way to stay involved with naturalism, find new species. It's a fairly cheap hobby and there's a ton of species and a ton of diversity out there. Have a great day.